Incredible performance by Carl Anthony Towns in the first half, lead the charge for the Minnesota Timberwolves. And in the second half, Derrick Rose took over. You know, he's one of your leading vote getters out west. And it's not just because he's a fan favorite from being the youngest MVP in league history and bouncing back. Performances like this are really credible for the kind of season he's having. Well, one thing we'd say about him, he has made shots on a much more consistent basis, something that just didn't happen. This is a guy who worked at it and worked at it. This is a tough shot. Going to his right, a step back, a little bit off balance, and he drains it. Yeah, and it's, you look at it, his left foot it is, you know, the step that he took back was with his right, but his left foot plants. He finishes the shot, Coach, with his right foot in the air, leading that shot in. I mean, this is something that you look at where Derrick Rose has been and where he is now in his career, just remarkable to see a guy come back from all of the adversity on and off the court he's had to deal with. Yeah, you have to really feel good. Okay, it's a guy who's gone through so much, okay, to get his body back to where it is right now, get his confidence back in his game, and it seems like he found the home here in Minnesota. <laughs> And just two points in the first half, one for six from the field, hits the game winner, but scored 29 points in the second half. The resiliency is kind of a microcosm of his career, Sekou, if you, if you look at it. It is. And, you know, I, I know he got emotional early this season when he got the MVP chance back in Chicago, um, when he hit a, a big shot early this season in Minnesota and the fans, you know, showed him love. This is a guy who has always talked about when he started going through all the drama that he just wanted to get back to playing ball. He just wanted to get back out there and enjoy playing ball like he did early in his career. A much different human being now, Coach, but a guy that still, when you talk about exceptional talent in this league and an ability to take and make big shots, he still got all of that in his repertoire. And he reminded us in that interview that Carl Anthony Towns had it going in the first half. So, yeah, I didn't have a good first half, but... The other guy, the big fella, was really good in the first half. He, he took his turn in the second half. That was his first game-winning shot since January of 2015. And again, when you look at what he's been through in his career, we've talked about how happy you can be for him. But to can see him to continue to do it all season now, it's one thing to see him give us this vintage Derrick Rose in spurts. But now it's, it's almost the entire season. When you pack his performance, uh, you know, this season on top of the 50-point, game that he had on the MVP votes. You talk about a, a, a real redemption story that could be written beautifully as if Derrick Rose shows up in Charlotte. I'm, I'm not saying it's going to happen, and I'm not saying it should because there's a lot of players who could make strong cases for that All-Star team, obviously. But what a story would be if he shows up in Charlotte All-Star Weekend, Coach, after all that's going on in his career. You'd have Rose on one, and you'd have Wade on the other one. would be interesting, <laughs> wouldn't it? Certainly, and we can't overlook the contributions of Taj Gibson in this game. I mean, he was 7-8 for the field, 17 points, but made some incredible plays for Minnesota down Huge the stretch. Huge defensive play on Devin Booker down the stretch where he stripped that ball away. Booker thought he got fouled. I thought it was a really good play by Taj you know, Gibson. And that's just a we, – we gave up on this Minnesota team after all the Jimmy Butler drama and everything went on and Tibbs gets fired. And they've, they've actually scrapped and, and really shown themselves to be a team – that's got a lot more heart than maybe guys like Jimmy Butler were giving him credit for earlier this year. I'm curious in the second half of the season, this Minnesota team, can they be a team that wins 8 out of 10, might lose a game, then come back and win another 5 out of 6? I don't know if they've got that in them, and that's what I'm waiting to see. Yeah, and it's tough out west. Look, 22 and 24, they're now three games out of that final spot in the playoffs out west. So, like you said, they're going to have to make a run if they're going to do it. Winning games like this, Derrick Rose getting his first game winner since January of 2015. That's going to help them in the long run. All-star game coming up. Let's take a look at fan voting so far. Oh, look out west. Derrick Rose, Luka Doncic leading the fan votes over recent MVPs, James Harden and Kevin Durant. In the east, Dwayne Wade might be the biggest surprise. He's currently second Amongst guards, the 37-year-old, of course, is a fan favorite and is retiring at the end of the season. Recently, some current players told us who their all-time starting five would be. You want to start a fun debate? And now, the starting lineup. All-time starting five. Oh, all right. Uh, it's tough. Uh, it's super tough. Uh. Too many to choose from. Well, that's an argument you could get from east to west. 
Johnson mixing in low to green, swing left, the right hand sky hook of 12 is good. I don't think I can pick five to do it justice. And you gotta go by position. Magic at the one. I'm going with Magic. Magic at the one. Magic Johnson. Magic for sure. Magic Johnson. Did he make a miraculous shot? Yes. Has he ever done it before? You bet he has. My one of the uh, Steve Nash would be my one. Kyrie Irving at the one. Jordan at the two. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. MJ. Mike. Michael Jordan be a two. Gotta go with MJ. Jordan to the circle, puts the shot in the air. Oh, the game's over. I'll go Kobe at the three. Kobe Bryant. I'll have to go with Kobe. I would say Kobe. I'm probably go with Kobe on the other wing. I got LeBron at the three. LeBron James, LeBron, LeBron James. I could say I'll, I'll probably say LeBron. LeBron at the four. LeBron at the four. Yes, LeBron I gotta put the, the big fundamental in there, Tim Duncan. Probably Tim at the four. Timmy D at the four. Birdman took a oh. shot and Duncan throws it down over. I'm going with Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley. I'll probably go with my boy uh, KD at the four. Let's say Malone. Come on. The Dirk at the four. Dirk. Hakeem Olajuwon at the four. At the five, I'll say Will. Will Chamberlain. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Hakeem. Five would have to be Shaq. Gotta go with the big fella, right? The run out to Shaq. I got Shaq. Kill on now. Shaq. Shaq. Shaq at the five. Can you do that? And the debate will continue. That's a list I gotta really think about. I can't say start at six. Well, the start at six sounds I like, like a really interesting idea because all time starting five is different than the top five discussion, right? Because you're factoring position and fit and just guys you wanna pick. So Seku will allow you to go first. Well, I agree with a lot of those guys. I don't think you can start a team in this league or in this game without Magic Johnson at point guard. To me, that's just a no brainer. Michael Jordan, the GOAT as my two guard, or if we're going to play positionless, why don't you give me KD and LeBron at the forward spots, and then give me the guy who I think cradle to the grave coach, the greatest player in the history of the game, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar holding down the middle. Well, I, I like a lot of the people on your team. I would hope so. I, I think they probably could have a decent game against our team. <laughs> okay, because... Decent? So who you got to beat this team then? Well, let me explain something to you. Everybody's thinking about small ball and shooting threes. I'm going the other direction. I'm going to beat everybody up and then never get an offensive <laughs> rebound. And we're getting, if we miss a shot, we're getting all kinds of offensive rebounds. But I want you to see my team, which is a special oh, group of guys. Oh, wow. Okay, you see my group out there? You got Shaq, you got Chamberlain, you got Bill what? Russell, you have Kareem, and I borrowed Tim from the power forwards to bring the ball down the floor. We're playing 2-3 oh. zone. We're switching everything. If you decide you're going to foul us, put us on the foul line, we might be a little shaky at the foul line with that group. <laughs> but you're going to have to foul us so many times, your players will be left <laughs> in the game to play against us. So watch out for my team. Coach, we're not playing in the backyard now. We actually got to play a, a real game with Come referees. out and play against us. Show up. <laughs> our guys will be there. So show that up. Is, that is incredible because, <laughs> Sekou, I kind of anticipated that. So you're playing Shaq at the five, right, I'm hoping? Shaq can play wherever he wants. <laughs> you know, wherever he wants to be. Kareem at the four. Wilt at the three. Timmy at the two. Tim's at Bill Russell's t running the point. T no, t Timmy's my point guard. He, <laughs> he can handle a little bit. Well, we'll just pass it up. We'll just throw lob passes up the floor. That's true. Positionless the basketball right there, Chris. That's, that is. That is positionless basketball at its finest right there. That is a phenomenal game. And I didn't tell you my first two subs, by the way, okay? Akeem Olajuwon <laughs> and then Moses Malone behind him. Those are the other two coming off, just to let you know. I mean, you, you can at least have a shooter like Dirk Nowitzki. I got Steph coming off my bench as my sixth man, so we're going to get some shooting on the floor as soon as we run. As soon as we run these big boys, you know, tired, get them tongues Look, out. Look, there's Jordan over one of your big fellas. Okay. You guys are in trouble. No Jordan to shoot another, uh, over no another big fella. Right we no may get four shots every time we miss at the best. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> so, yeah, no point guard love for me. I'm just going big. Wait, Magic's a tall point guard. I'm going big. I Coach got my guys. Big, going going home, and, and when we get our hands on them, they're going to be going home. Simple as that. Mm.
Sekou's thinking his team's going to win. That'll be a tough one. I think uh, you'll have the wins in the post. You'll have the wins in the perimeter. There are 11 NBA games on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Start your day with us here on NBA TV. Knicks and Thunder take the court at 1230. And it's a triple header on TNT, concluding with the Warriors and the Lakers. One, two, three, four, five, six, boogie. Come to the rack. How serious was that move? One, two, three, four, five, six, boogie. Man, oh man, I can take a few more of those. And Boogie hammers it on the run. One, two, three, four, five, six, Boogie. Somebody won't get Boogie. Well timed. You watch Marcus Cousins play, you see all the talent, you see the numbers, not too many big guys at his size. Is that agile, that mobile, can shoot the three, put the ball on the floor, get to the basket. He could be the best big man in the NBA. But he got so much physical talent. Boogie for three. Unbelievable. Left going to the rim and dumped it on a wind-up right-hand finish. And DeMarcus Cousins can't go. Oh, He's holding that left lower leg area in the area of his Achilles. It's one of the most unique free agent situations we've seen in a lot of years. I'm a warrior. In gigantic news, DeMarcus Cousins has agreed to a one-year $5.3 million deal with the defending champion Golden State Warriors. No dropping me to the ground because it's going down. Defeated. Apparently, nobody else wanted to mark his cousin. He didn't get one single offer. Well, my main goal is to win a championship. That's that's what I'm signing up for. When the injury happened, he's getting ready to sign a max, near max contract. So think about that. Look at the work Boogie has put in just to come back. Mm -hmm. Think about the work ethic it takes to get all the way back physically from where he was. I'm improving each and every day. I'm getting strong each and every day. You know, just a matter of time before I'm back on the floor. Uh, we're, we're definitely excited to have him. And he's been working hard. It's been a long year for him. I'm looking forward to just seeing him out on the floor, just doing something that he loves again. Oh! You can shoot, you can space the floor, you can do it all. He's a monster on the boards. He's going to be great. It'll be a lot of emotion, honestly. You know? I don't think anybody could ever really understand this, and I don't really expect them to, unless they've, you know, they've experienced themselves. This is something that other teams have never had to worry about with Golden State. They can now actually produce offense from the inside out with a true big. Maybe Boogie is the wrinkle in the injection of energy that this Warriors team is really looking for for this season. I'm excited to see what we look like when once DeMarcus gets his feet underneath him. We got a chance to be really good. Undefeated. Well, Boogie certainly gave us a lot to talk about in his first 14 minutes for the Golden State Warriors on Friday. Four-time All-Star scored the first two points of his first game. And then DeMarcus Cousins ended up with 14 points, hitting three of his four three-pointers. 3D, it looks like that moniker of Splash Cousins. <laughs> it's going to stick, especially after those open looks he got in his first game. How is he so wide open? Well, he's playing with great players and obviously playing with three flame, flame, flame throwers <laughs> is just going to create so much space. So I think he may take a few games to get used to that, to have three guys on the floor that any given night they can go for 40 or yeah. 50. And on the flip side of that, they're willing to share the basketball. He's going to have to get used to so many guys willing to give him the ball. So when you watch some of these plays, first play of the game, you talk about the dunk. Well, it's because Kevin Durant has the basketball. He comes off the screen. You have to. Gortat has to honor Kevin Durant. He gets the easy dunk. You look at the bench. Everyone's applauding. Now you throw him in the mid post. Look at the patience. He's never had a Steph Curry or a Clay Thompson on the floor at the same time. You have to honor them. Easy layup. So now you're saying flow of the game, great spacing, play good defense, contest the shot. Now, wait a minute. Big Cuz, he's out run. Bumps into a defender, keeps running. And Kevin Durant, once again, unselfish. The perfect bounce pass booze. I think Cubs, once he gets into basketball shape, mm -hmm. you know this, yeah. he's going to have so much fun, less pressure, because you heard Iguodala at the end of the game, man, keep shooting. He's like, I don't want to shoot too much. Mm -hmm. I've never been in a situation like this. I think he's going to have a lot of fun this year. Yeah, absolutely. He's playing with great, great players around him, all Hall of Famers, great coaching staff. They want you to have success. They feed you into that environment. Like you said, Iguodala after the game was saying, we want you to shoot more. You're going to be open a lot because you're playing with three guys that are averaging over 20 points a game, playing very well. I think, as you said, as he gets in better basketball shape, he could have some big numbers with that team.
Yeah, it's going to be fun. Well, we're out here. The guy fun. with the ball we leads. He leads the way. Yeah, it's on, your hold turn. On. Hold on now. Who I get to be? You get to be Steph Curry. Ooh. Get the shot. Huh? Here we go. Now, if you shoot, you got to make it. I'm going to be KD. You know, DMV. You're going to be boogie. Boog. Right, let's let's talk about the first play. Here, 3D. So the first play, Kevin Durant has the basketball, and he's pointing at Cuz. Now, look at the spaces. You got Steph Curry over there. You got Klay Thompson over there. So the whole middle of the floor is wide open. So now he's telling him to come. He sets the screen out here. He turns. Now, because it's Kevin Durant, you saw they have to honor this simple bounce pass. Now he gets all the way to the rim, and he stretches out for the dunk. Now we're going to go to that second play we saw. I'm going to be Klay Thompson now, and you're going to be Steph Curry at the top of the key area. So once again, we talk about player movement, ball movement. That's normally Draymond Green. So now Klay comes down, hits the ball. We call this a hold. Why we hold? Because all that area is down there. Now I'm run over here and be Draymond Green. Now I'm going to set this screen. Now this Steph Curry coming off for an easy layup. You have to honor that. All right? Now the last play, we're going to shoot. I'm going to be Clay Thompson again. You're going to pop out. Now I'm hitting. We're cutting. I'm coming over here. I'm Clay. And you're cutting to the basket. Now you pop back. Now you're wide open for the shot. And I think that's the part last night Cousins was talking about. I'm going to have so much isos or one-on-ones on the weak side of the floor because of all the cutting and all the team being so unselfish. Yep, and for Boogie, when he was in Sacramento, he was the guy. And in New Orleans, it was Boogie 80. Maybe you consider Drew Holiday oh, yeah. as that similar threat. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in Golden State, Steph Curry is a threat when he comes past half court. Same thing with Klay Thompson and Kevin Durant. So there's more floor spacing for DeMarcus Cousins. He's going to adjust to that quickly. Oh, it's going to be great for him. He's going to have so much room to operate. You got shooters spreading the whole floor out. Everybody's at the three-point line. So when he gets the ball on the, on the box right here, he can go one-on-one. -on -one. Who are they going to double off of? Right. Maybe Draymond. So, no, hold on. Stay there. So you, you be Steph at the top. I'm going to be Clay. You go a little deeper in the post. Yeah. And I, now, if it's KD or if it's Clay or if it's Steph, we call it hit and hold or you stay or you hit and cut. Where are you doubling from? You're going to double off Clay, 14 threes. You're going to double off of Steph, 13 threes. You're going to double off KD. I think he's made nine or ten threes in the game. Yeah. So this is what, think about this for a second. The Golden State Warriors have never had this. Whew. Think about this for a second. They've already won three championships, but they never had a guy that they could throw the ball into the post and guys just space out and wait and you pick your poison where you want to double team from. And they've also never had a stretch five. What we mean nope. by that is he had three three-pointers in the game. Yep. The Golden State Warriors, in this run that they've had, they've never had a center hit three three-pointers in the entire time that they've <laughs> played with a team. They, it's never happened. Never so happened. from that point of view, that they're a threat offensively, defensively. Boogie fouled out, yeah. but you like that effort from him. Yeah, that, that's part of that's just getting back in basketball shape. You know, he hasn't been playing against live bodies in over a year. So he's going to be a little bit behind, a little step slow. His leg's going to feel a little bit more today than they did yesterday. But once he gets back in basketball shape, like 3D keeps talking about, those fouls will go down and down and down. And uh, he's going to have a lot of success. Now, I, it's, it's just fun, man. It's when you have five guys on the floor thinking the same way. Share. He has a better shot. I have a good shot. My teammate has a better shot. Move without the basketball. Help the helper. All those phrases we use every night. He's finally on the franchise and the team that everyone's on the same page. And they're trying to win another championship. Two in a row, Golden State Warriors looking for that third boogie. Looks like he's going to be a big piece of that. Victor Oladipo had his all-NBA breakout season last year. This year, the Pacers remain near the top of the Eastern Conference standings. We'll hear from Indiana's best player next.